No matter if you're at the top, your humility and respect towards the discipline and other fighters are what will make you a true champion. With actions that define us, it's easy to let glory blind our vision and lead us down the path of arrogance and arrogance, but when our moment is up, the fall is much harder. Welcome, in today's video, we bring you a countdown full of arrogant fighters who have received harsh doses of reality, reminding them that, no matter how many titles they hold, they are not the best. Get comfortable, because the first lesson is about to begin. On the 2nd of July in the year 2011, the date when David Hay and Vladimir Klitschko were supposed to face their destiny, stepping into the ring at the Imtech Arena in Altena, Hamburg, Germany. Neither of them was a novice. This was Klitschko's 10th defense of the International Boxing Federation heavyweight title and the World Boxing Organization heavyweight title. In addition to the 6th defense of the World Boxing Organization heavyweight title and the 3rd defense of the ring heavyweight title. But Hay had the final card to complete his deck as he was defending, for the third time, the World Heavyweight Super Title of the World Boxing Association. Despite being the fighter with fewer belts, Hay displayed extreme confidence before the fight, which could have been translated as arrogance. However, discipline has taught us that destiny puts everyone in their place. After 12 violent rounds, judges Stanley Christodoulou, Michael Pernick, and Adelaide Bird would rule in favor of Klitschko, announcing him the winner by unanimous decision. And Ian Rose saw a big spin. Oh, that's the stand right hand, the one two from Klitschko. There's the wild shot. Klitschko celebrates. Hey, perhaps more out of all. Danger Zone would be the name with which the event featuring the controversial confrontation between Adrian Broner and Marcos Maidana would be promoted. Broner was known for his arrogant attitude and extravagant lifestyle, which set him apart from the sportsmanship every boxer should possess, regardless of how many titles they hold. On the 14th of December in the year 2013, the night he would step into the ring at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, Broner would be in the first defense of his World Boxing Association welterweight title. Far from living it with humility, he underestimated Maidana's ability to take it from him. Karma struck mercilessly at Broner, who was knocked down in the second and eighth rounds. Two rounds, and there's the right hand lead by Maidana that sticks. Another right hand! And now Broner touch. comes back with a one-two. Right uppercut by Maidana, the runs See, out. I know it's Adrian Broner, and he's supposed to be a star. Oh, Adrian Broner with the headbutt. Ah, uh, he's milking it, guys. All right, come on. However, his biggest lesson would come at the end of the 12th episode when judges Dwayne Ford, Chuck Jampa, and Patricia Morse Jarman unanimously declared Maidana the winner of the bout. Well. Far from having learned anything, Broner would leave the ring disrespecting his opponent without congratulating him and disrespecting the media by refusing interviews. However, he would later apologize to his fans for his terrible attitude. Ricardo Mayorga is next on the list of arrogant boxers whom karma taught a brutal lesson. In 2004, he was so confident of his victory that he stimulated a side bet with his opponent where the winner would take home $100,000. But this is no surprise. Mayorga was known for being a provocateur before stepping into the ring, and when he faced Felix Trinidad, it was no exception. The contest would take place on the 2nd of October in Madison Square Garden, New York, and would be the inaugural fight for the vacant middleweight title of the North American Boxing Council. Felix Trinidad had been away from the ring for two years, giving Mayorga the confidence to talk nonsense about him. However, in front of over 17,000 fans, not only did he dominate him from the start of the fight, but he also defeated him by technical knockout at 2 minutes and 39 seconds into the eighth round. Mayorga, like a spoiled child, announced his retirement on the 5th of October only to return to the ring to fight against Michelle Picarillo. It was only a matter of time until a legendary Aztec warrior appeared on our countdown. Many of us remember Marco Antonio Barrera's passage through the discipline as that one-in-a-million experience. However, on the opposite side, Nassim Haimed, a British boxer, made the mistake that every opponent repeats when facing a tricolor fighter, underestimating him. Haimed exuded confidence with a flashy behavior, to say the least, before the fight, 
And why not, since Barrera was considered the loser 3-1 in the betting odds leading up to the bout. However, on the night of the 7th of April in the year 2001, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, the surprising ending would explode in Haim's face and all those who didn't hesitate to underestimate Barrera. Halfway through the scheduled 12 rounds, Haim was ahead of Barrera. But the fighter lacked the endurance needed to stand firm for much longer, and it was then, without any mercy, that the Aztecs started stealing, blow after blow, his victory. Damage to you. Rather than saying, there you are. You wonder whether the prince has been thrown off. At the end of the 12th episode, judges Dwayne Ford, Chuck Jampa, and Patricia Morse Jarman, by unanimous decision, would point to the tricolor as the winner of the bout who would win the featherweight linear title and the featherweight title of the International Boxing Organization, destroying the British boxer's arrogant confidence. Yeah, but he's starting to pick up the power. Hit! Big left hook! We take this position in our countdown to remember the gangster, Mitch Green, who both inside and outside the ring was unable to win about against the legend Mike Tyson. Precisely the street fights and a defiant attitude are what would make Kimbo Slice famous before his foray into MMA. Slice transitioned to professional mixed martial arts in November 2007 for Elite XC, winning against Andy Cantrell by technical knockout. This would lead him to start a winning streak that would be enough to prove he was a legitimate force in the heavyweight division. Far from having taken his professional triumphs with humility, by the time destiny led him to face Seth Petrozelli, Slice had become a truly detestable figure whose ego needed to be stopped. Karma worked through Petrozelli. Approaching the inevitable end of the countdown, we find James Tony, an American boxing champion who made his professional debut on the 26th of October, 1988, winning by technical knockout against Esteban Lee. He retired from the discipline after winning his last fight by knockout on the 13th of May, 2017, against Mike Shepard, with a memorable professional record of 77 victories, 47 of them by knockout, 3 draws, and 10 defeats. For his respectable journey in the discipline, Tony, who dared to step out of his comfort zone, publicly dared to belittle Randy Couture's skills before his MMA fight in the year 2010. Of course, we couldn't close the countdown without mentioning the rematch between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, which took place just a couple of years ago on the 22nd of February, 2020, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Before the fight, Wilder showed great confidence and a rational attitude considering he had only achieved a partial victory in their first encounter. Wilder's World Boxing Council heavyweight title was on the line, along with the vacant The Ring heavyweight title and the vacant Linear heavyweight title. Fury would take a bit of karma through his fists to Wilder, winning every round, according to the cards of two judges, breaking the arrogant one until, in the sixth round, he could barely lift his fists. Midway through the seventh episode, Wilder's corner would throw in the towel to save their fighter from further punishment. If you've made it this far, we thank you. And we remind you that if you enjoyed our countdown, there's no better way to support us than by liking the video and subscribing to our channel by activating the notification bell. Who is another arrogant fighter you know who has received their dose of karma that is not in the countdown? We'll be reading your comments.